good day welcome back to my video and today we are chasing a mysterious car and so far so bad actually because that car that i am chasing is new generation electric car that's the only spoiler that i can give you and somehow um there was a miscommunication so i um so they had a head start and it was never good so i really pushing e-tron so driving 190 km per hour which is not good so the aftermath to that is that just a moment let me show you what happened in the cockpit right now so so yeah this is the setup for the high-speed chase and this is the aftermath as you can see the e-tron is charging at 124 kilowatt hour and which meant the battery was almost empty so i came here with around 20 kilometers of range not good so range anxiety did really kick in but um luckily um, as i can see from my navi on the way here there are actually way more chargers um i mean like the infrastructure is getting better now so if I really needed it I could have charged with 50 kilowatt but which is 50 kilowatt hour is not really good if you are doing like a long range driving like I'm only doing like 300 kilometers today is actually not that long range but because I am chasing someone that is a very long range to drive this car in an unrestricted German autobahn all right, uh, I'm gonna update you guys once I catch up with them. I think at one point we will do some stuff. So at the end of the day, I'm gonna catch them. <laughs> See you later. Hello Citrap, we are in a really big traffic so I just decided why not make a video about things that I love and things that I hate about this e-tron well, let's go with a positive note things that I love this car is a perfect, perfect daily drive well, I think like one contributing factor to that is that my work is like 11-12 kilometers away from my place so, which means electric car is a is a good fit for me, and it doesn't uh, it, it doesn't mean electric car is perfect for every, for everybody. I know some people who are doing like 800 ki uh, kilo kilometers per day, like you know, like I literally know a guy uh, once he did like 1,500 kilometers a day. In that case, it's quite difficult to recommend e-tron to him because he's gonna lose a lot of time on the way right <laughs> but it's a perfect daily for me first thing first it is so comfy it is quiet and don't forget um, there's one reason why Rolls Royce and Bentley is like mm, it's a perfect uh, luxury car because it is so quiet inside and e-tron in the cabin inside the, ca the, the cabin of e-tron is actually very quiet and the ride quality is decent like for for uh, for the class of e-tron the air suspension does help a lot um, of course I have driven a car with better more comfortable suspension or like air suspension but e-tron is literally from there and you, when you combine that with how quiet the car is driving it's just an amazing daily and it's a daily you know someone who just want to get home like you know no one can live 100 uh, miles per hour, per hour every day so as far as i'm concerned this car is a keeper for daily and let's go to the first thing uh, that i hate that i don't like about this car the range the range well I need to be fair and say this is the first um, batch of full electric Audi and back in the days 
to have 300 kilometers on full charge is actually not bad. And I am getting this car coming out of XC90 Hybrid, and that XC90 only get 15 km of full electric range with 100% charge. So 300 kilometers it was actually a lot when I get this car. But the range can be better. But luckily we have the facelifted e-tron with better um, with better range, of course, and. I might suspect, and I suspect that they, that they have the newer ECU, the one also from Etron GT, which means you can turn on your seats, uh, seat heating, and it wouldn't drain the range that much because in Etron in winter, ho ho ho, <laughs> you better just get cold for the range. So it's like very, re uh, it's very relevant to the time where we live in, where uh, where energy cost is going up at least in Germany because we bought our gas from you know who <laughs> well I'm gonna keep myself clear from politics <laughs> move on to the second thing that I like about this car the second thing that I like about this car it is quite roomy it is quite roomy so the booth can uh, the, um, it, it just can facilitate a lot of stuff so it is actually so right now it's like q5 just uh, drive past me on, on the left from outside it looks a lot bigger than q5 from inside it's actually not mm, i think it's marginally longer and a little bit wider than q5 in fact um last time i i had x5 for a while and that car is actually it's just my feeling right because i needed to go through the same gate uh, to my basement x5 was a little bit um narrower than e-tron sounds crazy yes but that's how i felt i haven't googled it because i didn't find this video at all and in general i'm not um like i'm not really into that details into that kind of like how many millimeters less or more i don't really care but if the car, if the car feels wider I just assume that it is wider but yeah but the boot is is quite good for mid-level SUV so this is by no means a full-size SUV I mean full-size SUV in Europe it means XC90 Range Rover or actually back in the days X5 but nowadays we have the X7 so I guess the X7 so this is still below them but it has enough room for everyone and it's not a problem to carry five like for shorter trips like we're talking about 10 kilometers 20 kilometer trips yeah second thing that i don't like about this car and i think i have mentioned it before it is very audi inside the interior well actually there's also a plus point later but the minus point is that they just need to put plastics and this piano black this piano black and the touch green I don't enjoy so the things that I don't like the second thing is the piano black the touch green and plastics I mean we can get rid of the plastics and you know put an Audi exclusive leather or something but then the, the price of this car is going to be 100 plastics for my taste and literally here where you normally um, rest your elbow or from time to time occasionally it is it's soft touch plastic but it's still plastic you know? <laughs> like, and I'm not being a snob here it's just like um, e-tron is now selling for as I said before 100k up to 120k depends which one you get 50 or 55 and if you get full option or not. But then the, the plastic in, in the interior where you can touch it literally every way does let down just let the car down a bit. And the touch screen, this three screen setup, it looks futuristic for the one who does 
who don't drive this car, but if you need to use it every day, sometimes you miss the buttons. That's why I'm, I'm excited for the Eton GT because climate control and some stuff down here is actually with buttons, a touch screen. That's a very nice one from Audi. You are listening to your customers or to the trend of the very All right, move on. Third thing that I love about this car. Funnily enough, actually, the interior. <laughs> it is really well built. I mean, it just feels good to be here. It's, I don't know, they are doing it very, um, how can I say it? Just elegant. It's not too much. It's not too spaceshipy like Mercedes. Like, I'm not saying that Mercedes interior is worse. Absolutely. It's just like, for, for my taste, I like this in better it's not too much but it's also not too cheap like apart from these plastics and it's just very well built it's almost three years and nothing came off yet and don't laugh when I said that nothing comes up after three years it's not it's not something that we can take for granted I know like well a car from a certain friend of mine something came off after three months <laughs> And of course, I'm not gonna say the brand here because I don't want to. I don't want to give them a bad name. A, a bad name. But believe me, something can come off after one year or two years or three years. You know. And yeah. So the last thing that I don't like about this car is actually. I think it's a little bit nitpicky, but. The app, the app sometimes can just get to your nerve. I'm talking about that moment when you want to turn on the heater in the deepest winter and it just wouldn't start. It just wouldn't start. You can restart the app, you can do everything and it just wouldn't start. When it doesn't want to start, it just wouldn't start. That's amazing and I think once it just cannot connect to the car. And when I went to the um, to the shop, they said like, ah yeah, um, it needs an update or something like that, or something deleted um, something in the system, so I cannot connect to the car. And I was like, all right, why don't you tell me that? Because before that, I went on holiday, so I can't connect to the car for three whole weeks. I came back and then, you know, need to go to, to the shop. And I mean, it's kind of like, um, like it was an easy solution actually but sometimes you know for some people like they don't really have time for this kind of stuff like going to the shop is just I don't know you need to plan it and sometimes it's just annoying you know if you need to do stuff that's, uh, that you don't plan and then you need to wake up earlier you know and I know I'm I'm ranting quite a bit here, but I think that's one thing that, that I mean, uh, can do better. And of course, like I haven't mentioned it yet, but one good thing about this car, which also was the main reason why I get this car, is the look. This car looks good. It looks masculine. I like the like the hips or the shoulder that I can see from here, um, from the mirror, from the rear mirror, and also the lights, the it's animation and this kind of, and, and this and that. This just creates a, a really really nice package. So it, I think when Etron was it was introduced in I think 2018. I can be wrong. If I'm wrong, feel free to correct me in the comment section. Mm, I saw that like, yeah, that car looks good. You know, and I think until now I only felt like that for e-tron and bmw 8 series 8 series when it was when they were introduced and funnily enough i had the privilege to own both of them now, of course the 8 series the, the 8 series was kind of like a little bit short uh, but hey i still had the chance to uh, to drive the car and it was amazing it, it was not just pretty face and it run kind of like more only like a pretty face but now looking back um, 
uh, added like getting this car on the lease for three years. It was not all bad. I mean, I'm pretty thankful because after I got this car, well, no one can know the future. But then, like, is it last year? Um, last year or two years ago, the the price for uh, for petrol was going up, and doesn't matter how you see it, the price to run electric car is significantly lower and in this case I'm very lucky I really didn't know that, that it would happen and to be honest no one can know it as I said before so yeah I consider myself lucky and it is not a bad car at all as I said before the driving quality is amazing and it's instant this instant tour is also quite addictive which is the reason that Eatron GT is coming in March well, um, I asked my Audi dealer and it's confirmed for March, so I'm gonna go to, uh, to Ingolstadt, Ingolstadt I guess, or Megasol to pick up the car and of course I'm gonna uh, do a video and thank you guys to pick up the e-tron GT, it's gonna be a good day. So yes, um, that's about it, so um, right now I am out of, I am crawling out of the traffic and soon I'm gonna reveal the mysterious car well I don't know if it's if this one and that one gonna be one video because if it is then I'm gonna reveal to you guys the mystery car all right in this case then stay safe stay cool keep on driving and drive safe especially if you're driving in Germany or wherever it is actually they are always idiots so yeah take care of yourself and see you in the next video thank you for watching love you guys see you next time bye bye